Now we can take another moment equilibrium. And of course, we can choose whatever direction you want to choose because the result will always be the same as long as we're being consistent. So here, if we assume that because the forces that can produce a moment in this case at this point, it's going to be this force, this force, and the moment itself, right? Just like what we did with the previous force free body diagram, it's going to be the three of them. So you want to take the turns which will make them the turns to be positive. So here we're going to say that not clockwise, we're going to say counterclockwise will be the positive direction. And then we're going to arrive the following moment equilibrium expression, which is the first one is Q times L minus C over L times X. Why is X? For the same reason in the first free body diagram. So that means in this case, we're going to define the X, Y, Z from here. This is going to be Y. It's going to be the X. Professor, why it's uh, X? Why not this L minus X? Hmm? You can also do that. Oh. You can also say that I want this to be L minus X. But remember, here, the way we cut this, the second one is, let me use different colors so you can see the difference. The first free body diagram is like this. The second free body diagram is cut, cutting from this side. Like this. Because we want to avoid the difficulties dealing with the vertical force Q. And of course, at location of force Q, they should be the same. So coming back to this equilibrium, this will become two plus P times Y equals M internal. Like that. Of course, from here, you know that the X we have here is actually the X1 and the X we have here is, is actually the X2. So we can make this distinction here. This is X1, Y1, this is X2, Y2. And you make this to be X1, y, Y1, and this is X2, Y2, right? Because we changed the quad reference system. Right? Because we have two different regions. One is right here, the other is right here. That's why one of them is X1, the other one is X2. Now, step two. From structural analysis, we know that the following expression. Internal bending moments are related to the second order derivative of deflection. So we know that EI times the second order derivative. of deflection. Deflection here obviously is the variable on y axis. This must equals to negative of internal bending moment. And this definition is always true no matter you applied it to columns or to beams. Similarly, the third order derivative of deflection with respect to x plus the force must be equal to the negative shear. And this is also true because this definition. And that gives us this. P times Y dx must equal to negative V. And the V here is shear. 
and the M internal means internal bending moment. If you have a distributed load, right now we don't have it, but if we have distributed load, and that expression, if you want to know, is actually the fourth order derivative of deflection. Plus a concentrated force times the second order derivative of deflection. This will equal to distributed loading, we call it Q. And Q is distributed loading. V here is internal shear. This one, M internal, is by definition internal bending moment. Like this. Okay, now we can at another page, we can continue solving the problem. So, next one is page eight. And we are at what? Because we know the result. So from FBD, which is the first FBD for X1 and Y1. So we just call it with x1, y1. And the other one is with x2 and y2. On this one, we have this result. We just substitute the condition that we have. So the moment equilibrium, the one we had before, which is this one here, right? You're gonna copy it, but you're gonna replace it with the definition. So if we recite everything, Right now, from there, we know that it equals to Q times C over L times X1 plus P times Y equals to M internal, right? That's the one we had before on your note. Now, because M internal equals to negative EI times the second of the derivative of y, which is back to x. And this here, this x, if you use x1 and y1, you know that this has to be y1 and x1. Because we're dealing with x1 and y1, like this. So what we're gonna do is to replace, just replace this m int with this. Then you're gonna write the expression like this. So the expression will become, there's a negative sign here. You can either keep the right-hand side to be positive or, or the left-hand side to be negative, to be positive. If we just copy everything, this would look ex just like this. It's gonna be Q times C over L times X1 plus P times Y1 equals negative EI times the second order derivative of Y1 with respect to X1. Correct? So there's no trick. Just substituting the definition of internal moment. Just plug it into like this. So this is our first equation. And similarly, if I use the same thing, bond FBD, with x2, y2. You can, if you want, you can copy the whole thing. And from that definition, what we originally have is q times l minus c over l times, now we can just call it x2, plus p2, uh, p times y2. equals to another internal moment, right? Now we plug in the, the same definition, 
by internal moment. So the whole thing will just become this Q times L minus C over L times X2 plus P times Y2 also equals to negative EI times the second order derivative of Y2 with respect to X2. That's our equation too. You see, I did nothing but just plug in the definition. That's it. In equation one and two. Just plug in definition. That's it. Now, step three. We're going to introduce the very first variable that you're going to learn from structural stability. So this new variable is what we call stiffness coefficient. And, but uh, before, because we use K for stiffness coefficient, as you still remember at the beginning of the class. Now we're going to call it differently. We're going to say that the K square is defined as P over EI. This is an important definition. You're going to use it extensively in structural stability. If K squared equals P over EI, we also know that K is actually just a square root of P over EI. It's the same thing. In other words, if I know K, I know P. Right? It's just definition. Now, if you do that, equation one and equation two will become this. 